Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All of the Uvalde CISD Police Department suspended and the superintendent's future with a district. And we're going to take a live look out at the Alamo City. 67 degrees to start your Saturday morning. What does the rest of the weekend look like? Will we see rain? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Thank you for starting your morning with us. I'm up early today. Good morning, you guys. <laughs> How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. I'm sorry that we, we stole the weekend from you. No, not at all. It's good to be here. All right. You worked yesterday. Did you make it out yesterday? Enjoy yes. the weather? And we were in Uvalde yesterday, and we felt those spring. Goals. Oh, oh, there were some. Yeah, yeah, it was cloudy all day. Is it going to be like that today? We're going to have more sun than we had yesterday, although we are starting off with mostly cloudy skies. And again, I can't rule out a sprinkle or two, but we're not going to see any rain on your parade this weekend, although we desperately could use some rain. That would be nice if we could see any in the forecast. Take a look across uh, the San Antonio metro area. We've got mainly clear skies down at Stinson, but it's mostly cloudy at the airport, 66 degrees. Kelly Field, mostly cloudy, 66. It's 62 on the east side of town in Converse and mostly cloudy. And today is going to be a great day to go out and enjoy some time at some of our lake, local state parks or wherever you want to spend some time outdoors. Again, we're going to have partly cloudy skies, especially this afternoon. A bit of a breeze from the east northeast, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And generally, high temperatures should be in the mid to upper 80s. So all in all, a gorgeous day for us. And honestly, a beautiful weekend, too. A little bit breezy today with low heat humidity and tomorrow's going to be pretty pleasant. Partly cloudy skies 87 for the high temperature tomorrow too. But again, a little bit more sun than what we saw yesterday. Coming up, I've got a look at a cool front in our forecast. I'll tell you what that'll mean for our temperatures and rain chances in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. Now to late breaking news. The San Antonio Fire Department responding to flames on the city's northwest side. That's where we find our Jonathan Cotto. Jonathan, good morning. What can you tell us about what's happening out there? Good morning, Alicia. Well, the scene here is now dwindling down, but it has been a busy morning for San Antonio Fire Department. I'll step out of the way. That way you can scope the scene out right now. Fire crews are still keeping an eye out on this building here, a sea island. I'm located on 10,300 I-10 West. This is right across from the USAA headquarters and Hallmark University. Now, fire teams tell me that the fire may have started with the neon lighting that wraps Sea Island, the neon lighting that wraps the, the structure here on your screen. Right now, the food inspector is inside. Fire crews are continuing to road the property and just keeping an eye out for any of those potential hotspots that we know can tend to flare up in these type of situations. Now, we are looking at about $5,000 worth in damages here this morning. Fire teams also tell me that the good news here this morning, Max and Alicia, is that no injuries were reported. But again, the cause of the fire is still under investigation to deter determine that information accurately. Reporting on the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. This morning, the entire Uvalde CISD Police Department suspended all of this after the criticism for their response to the shooting at Robb Elementary. And shortly after the announcement of the suspension, the district superintendent announced his plans to retire. Superintendent Hal Harrell emailed staff yesterday about his retirement options, and the school district also announcing Lieutenant Miguel Mike Hernandez with UCISD Police is on administrative leave. School Administrator Kim Mueller retiring. Right, and charges have been dismissed against the teenager who was shot by a now former San Antonio police officer. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says Eric Cantu's charges are being dropped after reviewing the body cam video. But that could change after further investigation. The officer who shot Cantu, James Bernard, was fired after the incident that happened in the parking lot of a McDonald's last Sunday. Gonzalez says all an investigation continues on whether or not he will face any charges. When we we charge an officer with a crime. It, it is a very serious matter and we take it very seriously. But we do that because I have made a commitment to this community that there is no one that is above the law and we will hold everyone accountable, even members of law enforcement. As for Cantu, he remains in the hospital recovering from his injuries. An $11.4 million project now underway for the North St. Mary Strip. So the ongoing project in the nightlife area, well, it actually has a lot of business owners concerned. They say the metal pipes, the unfinished roads and the sidewalks, 
making life very difficult when it comes to attracting customers and making profits. San Antonio Public Works Department hosting a community meeting just yesterday addressing these local business owners' concerns, but they say without parking and little accessibility, they've already had to make staff cuts. Before the construction, we'd have four servers on and three full-time bartenders. Now we're down to one cocktail server and one bartender. The project will add two bike lanes on each side of the street. The big question people are left with is if there will be parking once it is completed. Now we're working to get you that answer. The city's District 1 office will host a meeting today, 2 o'clock, addressing the growing parking concerns. And that's going to be at San Antonio College Victory Center. And the San Antonio Housing Trust is seeking the community input on a proposed five-year plan that shows how the San Antonio Housing Trust will address critical and affordable housing needs here in the city. The chance to submit your input is available through Wednesday, October 12th, and you can do so by mail, voicemail, or email. For more information, you can visit their website. That's also where you can actually see the plan. That's sahousingtrust.org. The White House now responding to recent remarks by President Joe Biden, his warning that the world is at a risk of nuclear Armageddon. They say his message was meant to convey that no one should underestimate the extraordinary danger if Russia deploys tactical nuclear weapons in its war against Ukraine. ABC's Tai Hernandez has the latest. The Biden administration is downplaying remarks by the president, in which he said Russian President Vladimir Putin's threats to use tactical nuclear weapons pose the greatest prospect of Armageddon since President Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. The State Department is echoing similar remarks by the White House, saying the U.S. has not seen a reason to adjust its nuclear posture or seen any indication Russia is preparing to use nuclear weapons in the near future. What President Biden was speaking to yesterday uh, was uh, how seriously we take these threats uh, and how seriously we take the threats of nuclear weapons. All this after President Biden spoke at an off-camera fundraiser, saying he knows Putin well and he's not joking when he talks about potential use of nuclear weapons or biological or chemical weapons. We have uh, been quite clear about that uh, when Russian officials have made this threat over the course of this conflict. Uh, this kind of irresponsible rhetoric uh, is, is, is not something that should be coming from a leader of an armed nuclear state. It comes as President Biden believes Putin is growing more desperate on the battlefield after a series of Ukrainian military successes in recent weeks. In Ukraine, President Volodymyr Zelensky says he doesn't think Russia is ready to use nuclear weapons yet, but officials there are laying the groundwork with the Russian public, saying this to the BBC. They begin to prepare their society. That is very dangerous. Ukraine says 200 square miles of its territory and dozens of settlements have been retaken in the south in the past week. And Ukrainian forces are also advancing in the east. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Well, back here at home, today is the last day to adopt a pet for free at all San Antonio Pets Alive locations. San Antonio Pets Alive and the Pet Foundation, they're hosting the adoption event today. All cats and dogs seven months or older, free to adopt. Every animal adopted from San Antonio Pets Alive, they're going to receive their vaccinations, flea and tick prevention treatments, and microchips. If you have any questions, you want more information, just head to the website, sanantoniopetsalive.org. And another option to help out, a blood drive is happening today for the sudden increase in emergency trauma cases, creating a high demand for blood. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is asking people with type O blood to donate, which is the type that's used most in emergency situations. Today you can donate at the Keller Williams Heritage Blood Drive that's located at St. Vincent de Paul on 4222 Southwest Loop 410 from 9 a.m. until 1.45 p.m. As a thank you for donors in October, you can choose from two different Halloween themed t-shirts. You can make an appointment by calling the numbers 210-731-5590, or you can visit the website southtexasblood.org. Cannot stress this enough. They need all the donations they can get. It is quick, it is easy, and you get a free t-shirt. Absolutely. And like you said, it's fast, so make your appointment and help out. That's right. 609, 66 degrees out. Still ahead, we get a sneak peek oh. of some yummy foods. We'll tell you where you can get it in Texas Eats. All right, a new star is getting all the attention at the Virginia Zoo. More about the new cheetah cubs and why the zoo is holding back on releasing their genders. Cheetah cam. Cheetah cam. <laughs> we don't have a cheetah cam right no. now. We have a live cam. 
I felt it felt good out there this morning. We'll be back later on with more with Sarah Spivey's forecast for the weekend. Good morning and welcome back. The spotlight is on for two new cubs at the Smithsonian Institute in Virginia. And it was all caught on camera, the cheetah cam that is. Check this out. This video is from the cheetah cam at the Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute in Front Royal. Zookeepers at the facility say four -year -old, this four-year-old cheetah gave birth on October 3rd and the cubs appear to be strong and active. The keepers have not determined their genders and that's because they want this first-time mom to bond with, their new, with her newborns without interfering. And I have a feeling that you don't want to get in between yeah. a mama cheetah and her cubs. I that was my it. logic. <laughs> I was like, I, I get that. Give them time. Yeah, you're thinking like, is it because they're concerned about her? Yeah, I'm safety. sure they are. <laughs> <but> <laughs> both. I think it. Is, I think you're right, Alicia. Yeah. It is definitely both. Yeah, guys. Yesterday was kind of gray. I just wanted mm -hmm. to stay inside, mm -hmm. even though the weather was fine. You know, it was gray, and there were some areas of sprinkles. And even right now, we do have some clouds out there, but we are going to see more sun than what we saw yesterday. So if you're craving that vitamin D. You'll get a lot of that today. 66 degrees outside right now. Northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And we've got pretty low humidity out there, too. So it feels great outside early this morning. Let's take a look at the satellite and temperatures. You can really see that there are those who are experiencing some clouds this morning and those that are not. Out in New Braunfels, it's uh, pretty clear out there right now. But we are seeing clouds from Del Rio to Uvalde to Hondo to the west side of San Antonio. And as we zoom in, it's 63 in Bernie's 56 in Comfort uh, 56 in Kerrville. I love this because you can see that the clouds kind of act as a blanket and keep things a little bit warmer for those who have cloud cover. Take, for example, New Braunfels, which is experiencing clear skies, or Bulverde, which is experiencing clear skies right now. Temperatures are in the low 60s, upper 50s. But you go out toward Castroville, it's 70 degrees there because they got some cloud cover that's acting like a blanket. And as we head into the rest of the day, we are going to be seeing a little bit more sunshine all around. Now it's still going to be mostly cloudy early this morning, but by about noon we'll see partly cloudy skies. Temperatures will be in the low 80s and in the afternoon we're going to top off in the upper 80s, right around 88 in San Antonio. And one thing to keep in mind is that it is going to be a bit breezy at times. Winds are going to be from the east northeast at 5 to even up to 15 miles per hour. So there is going to be that breeze from the east northeast. As for high temperatures in your neighborhood, it'll be 89 in New Braunfels, 85 in Del Rio, 86 in Uvalde, 83 in Kerrville, cool 80 in Rock Springs, 91 in Catula, 90 in Beeville. All right, let's take a look at our weather setup for a second. As we take a wide view here, you can see just how quiet it is across the United States, with the exception of New Mexico, the panhandle of Texas, and into Oklahoma. Even starting to see some snow up in Canada. It is that time of year where things get colder. And the reason for the rain across parts of New Mexico and the panhandle handle is this trough of low pressure. It's cut off low right over Baja, California, and it is not going to be bringing us rain in San Antonio, unfortunately. However, we are going to have some clouds, not as much as we had yesterday, but intervals of sunshine and cloud cover from that low pressure system. The rain will transition into the panhandle by Monday. And again, notice that we do stay dry here in south central Texas. All right, I said a buzzword, cool front. Let's talk a little bit about it, okay? By about Wednesday morning, we are gonna see the front moving through the Rockies. There could even be some snowfall or some wintry mix for the Denver, uh, Colorado area. But this front, there are still some questions on how strong and how fast it's going to be. But what we can say right now is that it does appear that there's at least a small chance for a little bit of rain on Thursday. We're talking 20 to 30 percent and it'll be windy behind the front. Winds will be gusting up to about 25 miles per hour from the north. As far as a temperature drop goes, maybe about five to 10 degrees. So it really is not gonna be a very strong cold front, but it is going to be bringing us a chance for isolated rain on Thursday, isolated being the key word there. Uh, and we'll be watching it carefully. Uh, once we get into about the three to 
to day time frame, we have a much better idea on how much of a temperature drop this could bring us. But for now, here's what we're forecasting. Pleasant tomorrow. Some people have off on Monday uh, for uh, it is going to be temperatures are going to be in the upper 80s by then. A pretty nice day. Again, very similar from today through about Tuesday. Then we'll be at 90 degrees on Wednesday. That front moves through on Thursday, making it windy, bringing a small window for isolated rain and dropping those high temperatures by about 5 to 10 degrees into the low to mid 80s. And our morning should be more comfortable on Friday to upper 50s for a morning low. Guys, a lot we didn't cover in this half hour. We'll talk about Fido's forecast, show you pictures of your pups, and I want to take a check of the tropics. Uh, Tropical Storm Julia has its sights set on parts of Central America. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time now, 618, 66 degrees out. Still ahead in the next half hour, it's time to start planting those flowers. We'll tell you which ones and how you can make them bloom. All right, today on Texas Seeds, David Elder taking us to a spot in Bernie, serving up authentic Central American food. My only gripe is he didn't bring us samples. I know, I think those are, they have what, pupusas, I think. Ooh. Oh my gosh, those are good. All right, do you play the lotto? I don't, and I don't understand it, so help me out. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with pick three. Numbers are one, zero, six, fireball one, your daily four, six, seven, two, two, fireball zero. And your cash five, one, five, 13, 16, 23. I'll stick to scratch off. Oh yeah. Mega Million, 6, 11, 29, 36, 55, big number 21. Mega Pyre 2, good luck. We'll be right back. Now these right here, you said pupusas, these are very popular. Talk to me about what they are and what goes inside of them. Those are what they call revueltas. They will have cheese, beans, and pork. And then of course they're topped with uh, what we call curtido, which is the pickled cabbage uh -huh. and salsa. All right, so I want you to get the same thing. Get your bite ready with me, Brigitte. I'll do it the way we do it in El Salvador. How do you do it in El Salvador? In El Salvador, we take a piece of, uh -huh. of the pupusa like this. Then we grab some of, oh, the, of, the, of the cabbage like that. Uh -huh. And then we put a little bit of the salsa, and then Cheers. salud! Salud! <laughs> there we go, the papusas. Mouth watering. I, I feel like calling him and waking him up and being like, David, why didn't you bring any today? <laughs> Pupusas are so good, and it's all about the cabbage law, and the salsa isn't spicy, it's a tomato, like, it's just... I so wish people flavor. could have heard you because mm. you did like a walkthrough before <laughs> David even went into it. I love pupusas. Time now, just about 624, 66 degrees out. And today's a great day for bikers because it's National Motorcycle Ride Day. Without the one tire creation, this day wouldn't be possible. Good morning and welcome back. So, weather permitting, it could be a great day to hit the road on a motorcycle. It is a National Motorcycle Ride Day. So, October 8th celebrates the love of motorcycle riding. Take into the open road with the wind at your back. Typically, the end of the riding season for a lot of motorcyclists before winter starts to set in. It's also the month that John B. Dunlop developed the first practical pneumatic tire, tire in 1887. So, without this development in tire technology, motorcycles wouldn't be able to perform like they do. So if you have a bike, take it out for a ride today. And you know what? We're not going to limit this to motorcycles, bicycles, tricycles, scooters. Oh, and the perfect <laughs> scooters, tricycles, but also for drivers to be careful out there because yeah. it is easy to miss, but we always want to be careful um, and be mindful of bikers out there. True. Be safe, be smart. Time now, 627, 66 degrees out. Potential price hikes at the post office will tell you what might change and for how much in the next half hour. And unclassified documents from Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate headed to the desk of Justice Department prosecutors. What the former president's legal team is now saying. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. 631 this Saturday. And yes, we are about a week into October, and it's starting to feel like that. Thank goodness. I Yesterday know. was cloudy. It wasn't cold like we wished, I guess. What, I is, what is your like ideal temperature for the fall? I'm going to sound like that Miss Congeniality scene. Oh, my you goodness. Know? Let's like, hear I just it. want 70s. I just want 70s. So yeah, I have okay. woken up earlier some of the last week 
to just get that little feeling, you in, know? In the morning, right? Yeah. That crisp, cool feel. Because it still go, gets warm in the afternoons, oh, yeah. for sure. Hey, I want to go ahead and show you today's Fido forecast. Uh, if you're planning on walking your dog, this is Gabriel. I love this picture because Gabriel looks a little big for his doghouse there. And he's given some serious side eye. He's like, Mom, Dad, it's too early. Don't take a picture of me like that. But if you want to send in a picture of your pup for Fido's forecast, just scan that QR code. It'll take you to our KSAC Connect feature where you can upload a picture of your pup. And if you're planning on taking your dog for a walk, and I hope you are, it's going to be a really nice day. Um, you got the green paw for most of the day. I think in the later afternoon, right around 4 p.m., it is going to be a little warm, especially for the smaller pups, uh, but generally a pretty nice day out there. We have some clouds out there right now, and in the afternoon we'll have a little bit more sun. So more sun than yesterday. So here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast this weekend. Pleasant, low humidity, gorgeous outside. And next week we are going to see a cool front moving through Texas, but there are still some questions on its strength and whether or not we'll see any rain. I'll talk a little bit more in depth about that, and we are going to take a check of the the tropics. Tropical Storm Julia is heading for parts of Central America. I'll have those details for you coming up in just a bit. Max Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. We want to get back to that late breaking news we first told you about at six o'clock. Firefighters responding to flames at a restaurant on the northwest side. Jonathan Cotto is live. Jonathan, are there any injuries to report? Good morning, Alicia, and that's the good news here this morning that there aren't any injuries and also firefighters weren't met with any challenges here this morning. But I want to step out of the frame that we can take a closer look at where this fire may have possibly sparked right there on your screen at top of this building. This is Sea Island located on 10,300 I-10 West. We're right next to Hallmark University across the way from USAA's headquarters. And that's where they're telling us that a neon light wrapping this building may have provoked this fire here this morning. Now, no injuries were reported I was, as I was mentioning. Uh, there was about initially six units here on scene. The scene now dwindling down, but of course the cause of the fire is still under investigation. We still have several units out here patrolling the area, patrolling the building, just to make sure that there aren't any hot spots that we know tend to kind of flare up in these types of situations. But again, this fire is under investigation. And if you're wondering if this restaurant is going to be opening it back up, we are told they will be up for business, open for business later today. Food inspector has arrived as well as CPS Energy to assist. Reporting live from the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. A group of parents and relatives of the victims of the Robb Elementary School shoot shooting, they stood defiant outside Uvalde CISD District Headquarters for more than 10 days. They have been demanding action over officers' response to the school shooting, and they finally received the news they had been waiting for, calling it their first win. The district announced that it will be suspending all activities of the Uvalde CISD Police Department for a period of time, and placing Lieutenant Miguel Hernandez and Ken Mueller on administrative leave. Mueller chose to retire after being placed on administrative leave yesterday. Subsequently, Superintendent Hal Harrell announced that he is exploring his options to retire. Those families' protest and their resistance, their persistence turned to tears of joy and emotional hugs after finding out about the suspensions. People are finally being held accountable. Still not being super transparent, but we've gotten a little bit of accountability. So to win and we don't get very many of those. DPS will be helping out with security at those schools and families say their fight is far from over. They want to see the added security measures at all campuses that the district promised. After almost two months, a capital murder suspect is back in police custody this morning. Carnes County Sheriff's deputies arresting 37 year old Richard Montez at a hotel just yesterday. Montez was re-indicted by a Bear County grand jury for allegedly killing 14-year-old Angel Gabata and 69-year-old Benito Gallegos back in 2018. And the countdown to election day is on. We are 31 days away from the November election. Here are some very important dates to keep in mind. Next Tuesday, that's the last day to register to vote. October 24th kicks off the first day of early voting. And October 28th is the last day to apply for a mail-in ballot. Election day, of course, November 8th. And in your morning headlines, the first batch of unclassified documents seized from former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate 
are now on the desk of Justice Department prosecutors. The documents were sent to them after his legal team reviewed them. Trump's legal team is not asserting attorney-client confidentiality claims on these documents. They are different from the set the set an appeals court previously allowed the DOJ to access. The Trump's on Trump's end, he'll get back he'll get back documents that have been deemed quote not privileged but are legal or sensitive, and that'll happen on Monday. Anna Sorkin, the fake heiress Netflix is inventing Anna's based on, she's been officially released from detention. Released just yesterday, Immigration and Customs Enforcement have been holding her for 17 months at the correction facility in upstate New York. She was found guilty of scamming more than $200,000 away from banks and New York socialites back in 2019. As a condition of her release from detention, she had to post a $10,000 bond and she's going to need to wear an ankle monitor. She was also ordered to stay off social media and she has to remain at the same residential address 24 hours a day. And you might be seeing higher prices at the post office soon. The U.S. Postal Service has proposed price hikes to offset inflation. First class stamps would cost three cents more and mailing a postcard would increase by four cents. There also might be increased fees for P.O. box rentals, money orders and insurance. The Postal Regulatory Commission will review this will review this proposal. And if approved, the changes will take effect in January. Happening today is the Barbacoa and Big Red Festival here in San Antonio, a breakfast staple. <laughs> this is the first time back in action since the pandemic started. This festival kicks off today for from 4 to 11 p.m. and then again Sunday from 10 a.m. to midnight. Tickets are $10 for adults. Children 12 and under are free. The festival will take place at the R&J Music Pavilion on Pleasanton Road. That's on the city's south side. You can find all this information on ksat.com. So you get barbacoa and Big Red. I get Barbie. Today is a <laughs> Malibu Barbie pop-up shop. Yes, yeah, so if you don't want to get the barbacoa and Big Red, head on over the 2022 Barbie Malibu Truck Tour, making a stop here in San Antonio. It's going to be at the shops at La Quintera today. Starts at 10 a.m., goes to 7 p.m. right outside the Barnes & Noble. The truck will be selling a retro-inspired merchandise all in honor of the 50th anniversary of Malibu Barbie. Items range from $12 to $75. Some of the items include the Barbie logo embroidered denim jacket. I want that one. Of course. You don't want the pink Barbie logo hoodie? No, I want the jacket. What about a Malibu Barbie logo mug? Actually, that's a very good idea. There you go. We're going to see Alicia back here tomorrow <laughs> with the mug. It's going to be fantastic. So if you have any questions about the Malibu Barbie event, just head to ksat.com. Again, I'll bring you the mug. You bring me some barbacoa and Big Red. There we go. That's a good, good trade-off. That's a good trade-off. All right. Time now. Just about 640, 66 degrees out. Up next, we'll tell you why now is the perfect time to start planting those wildflowers. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. So, you enjoying the fall temps? Yeah. Who who wouldn't? Be? That's true. I think I July. Mean, even if it's just by a little bit. That's true. July hurt us a little bit. Those hundred degree day, hundred <laughs> degree day. Starting off in the sixties now. How hot will it get today? Will we see rain? We're gonna check in with Sarah in just a bit. Welcome back. Now is the time to plant your Texas wildflower seeds, including blue bonnets and other native flowers. So here's the thing. It takes more than just tossing a bunch of seeds into a field and hoping them to bloom. <laughs> I did that back in the day. So Sarah Acosta spoke with a local native plant expert about what you can do to see successful results this coming spring. Seeing our Texas blue bonnets or other wildflowers shoot up in March, it's a source of pride for us Texans. More importantly, our native wildflowers provide a healthy, diverse ecosystem, especially for our pollinators. And for the most part, September through October is the best time to start planting those seeds in South Texas. So ideally, you would be planting that seed at the same time that nature does it. But if you're doing a mix and you're trying to keep it simple, fall is an excellent time. Lee Marlowe is the sustainable landscape ecologist for the San Antonio River Authority. She says you need to follow some simple steps to see those seeds bloom in the spring. I bought my seeds from Native American Seed. It's a local company at a junction, but they have a warehouse in New Braunfels and they really know their native plants. Rather than just tossing them in the grass, she says they need to make soil contact. So I marked off an area to make a new wildflower bed in my garden. <laughs> I tilled up my grass or lack of for fresh soil to guarantee that seed to soil contact and place them gently right on top of the soil. If you're doing a small area, 
sprinkling it around, maybe walking around on top of it after you've done it, maybe lightly raking it is the best way to do it because you don't want to bury those seeds. Marlo says burying the seeds too deep may cause them not to germinate. And experts say it's okay if your wildflower seeds start sprouting in the fall. For example, this is native milkweed that I planted the start of September. You can see it's already growing pretty strong here. Now this will most likely die back come the winter, but that's okay. As long as the roots are established come the spring, they will hopefully sprout back up and be nice and strong. And for the first few weeks, make sure to keep the soil moist, especially since our ground is very dry from the current drought. Do a couple of deep waterings, then hand water daily for the first couple of weeks after planting. Marlo says, most importantly, be patient because some might not start growing right away. Some of them might just uh, wait for even another year. So usually the seeds, they know what they're doing. They wait for the right conditions. That may or may not happen. Usually it's rain dependent and it's temperature dependent. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. All right, so Sarah Spivey, is it good weather to start planting? I mean, yes, it's nice outside, but the problem is, like Sarah was mentioning, we are under extreme and exceptional drought, and October is one of our rainier months, and it doesn't look good for healthy rains over mm. the next several days. But we do have a front moving through that's at least going to be bringing us some chances for rain next week. Uh, but this weekend should be quiet and pleasant outside. Right now it is 66 degrees. We've got low humidity. Winds are from the northwest at five miles per hour, but they'll be taking an easterly turn today, potentially gusting up to 20 miles per hour at times. Temperatures out there right now, nice and cool and comfortable. It's 56 in Bulverde, 61 in New Braunfels, 65 Rio Medina. It's 66 in Castroville, 70 at Stinson, 55 in Kerrville, and 55 in Comfort. Take a look at these national temperatures. North is starting to get a bit of a chill to it. It's freezing in North Platte and it's 28 in Bismarck. And uh, as you look across the northern tier of the United States, cold this morning with temperatures in the 30s and in the 40s. But you can see a very clear line of demarcation here between the cool northern tier of the United States and the comfortable southern tier of the United States. And really what we would need is we would need a cold front to push this air south. And uh, as we look at this weekend, it doesn't look like that's going to happen for us this weekend. Instead, we're going to have a few clouds out there in comfortable conditions. Take a look at the weather setup. We do have some rain across the panhandle of Texas and New Mexico. This is all because of a uh, trough of low pressure cutoff low that's actually pushing through Baja, California. This low is not going to be moving all that much east, so we're not going to see rain from this low in San Antonio. Instead, just a a little bit of extra cloud cover throughout the week, but weekend, but not as much as we saw yesterday. We will see more sun than we saw yesterday. And there could be enough upper level impulses to produce some sprinkles. You can see here on this future cast that it does bring some sprinkles through Sabinal Hondo later today, but much of that will not even make it to the ground. And the reason for that, it is so dry. So even if there's enough oomph in the atmosphere to produce some sprinkles, they're going to evaporate before they hit the ground. So dew points are in the 50s. It's nice and dry. And throughout the day today, dew points will be in the upper 40s and low 50s. So today's forecast calls for more sun than yesterday, partly cloudy skies and warm pleasant conditions. It'll be uh, in the upper mid to upper 80s this afternoon. We'll have east northeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Sun's going to set at 7-Eleven. So if you have Saturday night plans going out or doing anything fun outside, know that it's going to be comfortable with temperatures in the 70s. It'll be 88 in San Antonio for the high, 89 in New Braunfels, 89 in Seguin, Floresville, 90. The peanut festival going down in Floresville. It's going to be warm but pleasant. 89 in Hondo, 86 in Bandera, 83 in Kerrville and Comfort. And I mentioned that we do have a front that is expected to move through today on Thursday. You can see that as of right now, not a particularly strong front, maybe just lowering the temperatures by about five degrees, high temperatures in the low to mid 80s by the middle of the week. And as far as rain goes, only an isolated shower or storm is possible Thursday as that front moves through. Still plenty of time though to see if that changes, if we have a stronger cold front moving through, but right now that's what it looks like for us. All right, let's take a check on Tropical Storm Julia. Tropical Storm on 
on the brink of becoming a hurricane. It's expected to become a hurricane a little bit later today, potentially making uh, landfall along the Nicaraguan coast and moving inland into El Salvador, but falling apart over Central America. So this will not be a threat to the United States, but there are hurricane warnings for parts of Nicaragua as Julia will be making landfall sometime probably tomorrow there. Otherwise, it looks like we're going to have pretty quiet weather here in San Antonio over the next couple of days. Highs in the upper 80s and then that front will knock temperatures down just a bit, especially in the morning and bring us a chance for some rain. Max, Alicia. So there you go, under 70 to start every morning. And then today for the peanut festival, but also the UTSA tailgate. Yes. It's not going to be as bad. I remember what a month ago it was pretty miserable. So it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a great day. So hot that day. Time now is 650, 66 degrees out. And coming up, how a team of bus drivers helped reunite a two-year-old with their parents after a carjacking. It's a crazy story. You're not going to want to miss it. Taking a live look out at the roadways. Not too many people out and about there at 281 at Bassey. If you are out and about, if you want to try to get those uh, errands done early, be safe, drive smart. And are you feeling lucky? Texas Lotto numbers, pick three, 106 Fireball 1, Daily 4, <laughs> 6722 two, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 1, 5, 13, 16, 23, and here we go. Mega Millions, 6, 11, 29, 36, 55, big number 21, Mega Pirate 2. Good luck, we'll be right back. Coming up on GMA, the latest in the war in Ukraine, Russia launching new missile strikes in Kharkiv overnight, a massive fire exploding on a critical bridge linking Russia and Crimea. More on the damage and what it means as the fight over territory continues. Plus controversy in the Miss USA pageant, the negative reaction from some contestants after the winner was crowned, why some are questioning the competition's legitimacy and the statement from the president of the Miss USA organization on all the allegations. And finally, as the coldest air hits the Northeast and the cost of home heating is expected to rise, we're helping share tips from one energy efficient expert to help you save. It's all ahead right here on GMA. Well, authorities in Michigan on the lookout for an alleged carjacker who stole a vehicle with a toddler inside. We want to let you know that child is safe. Investigators now just searching for the suspect. So thanks to the quick action of a school bus driver in Kellogg'sville, the two-year-old has been returned to his parents. So this happened on Tuesday. A mother and father waited outside their running car, putting their child on the bus. Now their two-year-old son was in the backseat of the vehicle. Without warning, a man ran up to the vehicle and took off. So all of this happening at the same time, a Kellogg'sville bus driver, Dave Skinner, he was driving down the street. I was heading down for my morning pickup down 48th Street, glancing down the road, and there were some people waving their arms down the side of the road. So the bus driver called 911, put out a call on his bus radio for other drivers to be on the lookout. Another bus driver saw the two-year-old sitting alone on the roadway. He was picked up, reunited with his parents shortly after. So thank goodness that these bus drivers coordinated, found the child, and they are safe and sound in their parents' arms. In the last video you saw, giving the baby back to the mom. That is so terrifying. So scary. It just shows like what can happen in a quick second. The parents were right outside of the car, but unfortunately things are dangerous yeah. sometimes. Good news is, two-year-old safe and sound. Yeah, that he's okay. That's good news right here. Time now, 6.56, 66 degrees out. We'll be right back. Well, today we have some clouds out there right now. It's in the 60s, but we are going to be able to warm up pretty quickly here. See more sun than yesterday. It'll be in the low 80s around noon, 88 for the high temperature in San Antonio and winds from the east northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So a touch breezy tomorrow and Monday, pretty similar and pleasant out there. And then as we look ahead to the week, we'll have a brief warm up to near 90 by Wednesday. Then a weak cool front will move through, bringing a small chance for showers, windy conditions, and knocking temperatures down by only about five degrees. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We'll see you back here at AM. Look at that sunrise. Gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right. This is a good start. Good start. It's just, we gotta come together. We gotta make, we gotta right the wrongs that happened that caused May 24th to happen.
This morning on GMSA, the entire police force for the Uvalde School District suspended. But parents of Robb Elementary School students and family members, they say their fight is not done yet. In just a bit, hear from the families and hear what comes next. Plus, it's almost time to light the night. What you can expect from tonight's big walk at Hemisphere. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Beautiful start, a crisp start to a Saturday morning. What does the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Saturday. It is October 8th. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Thank you for starting your weekend with us, Alicia. Happy to be here filling in. All Max, right. what's your perfect fall-like day? Oh, what is my perfect date? Yeah, day. But date, too. <laughs> Honestly, go. 66 degrees. It's a pretty solid start to the day. We couldn't, well, it could be cooler. What, 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 <laughs> what would you want, Alicia? Uh, low 60s. Low 60s. But okay. that's asking for, for a high, lot. For the high, low 60s for the high. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. How about 20 degrees warmer than that? Yeah, I know. That's I'll take it. it. I'll take it. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Alicia. Happy to have you with us this morning. Let's take a look outside with live cam. You can see that we are starting off our day with some sunshine. Yesterday's cloudiness. A thing of the past. Now we are still seeing some high thin cirrus clouds around San Antonio, but generally really pleasant out there right now. 66 degrees. It's 67 in New Braunfels, 65 in Seguin, 60. Three in Pleasanton. Today, a great day to head out to one of our many state parks. You know, there's a lot of activities going on this weekend, but if you're wanting to just be outside, here's a look at the state park forecast. Generally, we're going to have mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies, high temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, with the exception of the hill country. It'll be in the low 80s up near Enchanted Rock. And winds will be a touch breezy from the east northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now, today, gorgeous. 88 for the high temperature. Starting off tomorrow, at 64 and another pleasant day, just not as breezy 87 in the forecast, though. Next week we do have a cool front that's going to shake things up a little bit. So I'll have a look at that coming up in just a bit. Alicia Max. Thank you, Sarah. A group of parents and relatives of the victims in the Robb Elementary School shooting. They stood defiant outside Uvalde School District headquarters and they stood there for more than 10 days. And they've been demanding action over officers in action during the school shooting and parents are finally receiving the news that they hoped for. The district announced it'll be suspending all activities of the Uvalde CISD Police Department for a period of time. DPS troopers will step in to help. Lieutenant Miguel Mike Hernandez and Ken Mueller are also being put on administrative leave. Mueller chose to retire after being placed on administrative leave. Superintendent Hal Harrell has also announced he's exploring his options to retire. The family's chance and persistence turned to tears of joy and emotional hugs after finding out about the suspensions. People are finally being held accountable. Still not being super transparent, but they're... We've gotten a little bit of accountability, so it's a win, and we don't get very many of those. Brett Cross was one parent leading that protest, and families say their fight is far from over. They want to see added security measures at all campuses that the district promised. Looking ahead, the countdown to Election Day is on. We are now 31 days away from November 8th. So. Some important dates to tell you about. Keep in mind, next Tuesday, the last day to register to vote. October 24th kicks off the first day of early voting. October 28th, the last day to apply for a mail-in ballot. And then, of course, Election Day is November 8th. If you take a second, we have the QR, screen, QR code on the screen right now. If you scan this with your camera, it'll take you right to the vote section on ksat.com. There you can find everything you want to know about the upcoming November election. Happening today, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society hosting Light the Night, a special evening walk lit with lanterns, paying tribute to patient survivors and those who have had to battle cancer. Light the Night will be happening at Hemisphere Park, and that's exactly where Jonathan Cotto is this morning. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Max. It's a beautiful morning here at Hemisphere Park where it's all going to happen, take place tonight, like the night event where we know a lot of people are going to get together for a great cause. But to expand a little bit more on what's going to be happening with me is Joanna Rosales. Joanna, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. What can folks expect if they are planning on heading out to Hemisphere Park? 
Park tonight. Absolutely. So tonight it's a family friendly event. It's free to attend. We ask that you register in advance if you have the opportunity to receive one of your lanterns. And what that does, that in, in lets you uh, participate with us as we gather together to celebrate that those are, that are in their cancer journey and also remember those that we have lost. Now, Joanna, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society does so much for children who are disproportionately affected by blood cancers and, and other types of cancers as well. I, uh, tonight, how many folks are we expecting to see and uh, what's going to be happening? Because I know there's going to be lots of lights. Oh, absolutely. So we're really excited. Um, at this point, we're estimating a little over 4,000 people, which we're very excited to see, especially after these past two years. And you're going to see a mixture of families, of survivors, um, of people who are also remembering those who are not with us. So we have a beautiful remembrance ceremony at the beginning where you and your family can receive a carnation in honor of whomever you may have lost. But we're also going to be celebrating our, our folks that are still in treatment, our adults, our children, and so we'll have a beautiful survivor circle, and we're going to take turns lifting those lanterns to the sky and doing a beautiful one-mile walk in downtown San Antonio to celebrate and just honor everybody that's here with us today. That sounds amazing, Joanna. Thank you so much for joining us, but before we leave, if we can throw up that QR code, a reminder, folks, you can still register for tonight's event. That event is going to be accompanied with something really, really cool for you to participate in tonight's walk, showing that QR code. What time should they be out here? Here tonight absolutely we recommend you start to get here around 6 6 30 we have beautiful opening festivities with a dance team we have characters walking around we have a kids zone and then we do start our opening ceremony at 7 30 with a walk following that immediately so definitely head out here by 6 6 30. there you have it folks don't miss out register we'll have more information coming up in the next half hour back to you in the studio alicia and max Thank you, Jonathan. And like Jonathan was saying, we want to invite you to spread some of that hope with us at Hemisphere. So if you scan this QR code, it'll take you to the donations and registrations page on ksat.com. Well, today is the last day to adopt a pet for free at all San Antonio Pets Alive locations. San Antonio Pets Alive and the Pet Foundation hosting an adoption drive. All cats and dogs seven months or older, they are free to adopt. Every animal adopted from San Antonio Pets Alive, they receive their vaccinations, flea and tick prevention treatment, and microchips. And a blood drive is also happening today for the high demand for blood. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is asking people with type O blood to donate, which is the type that's used the most in emergency situations. Today, you can donate at St. Vincent de Paul on Southwest Loop 410. That's happening from 9 a.m. to 1.45 p.m. And as a thank you to donors, in October, you can choose from two different Halloween-themed t-shirts. You can make an appointment by calling 210-731-5590, or, or you can make an appointment at southtexasblood.org. All right, time now, 8.08, 66 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, we're going to the hey. State Fair in <laughs> Dallas. Yes, for some football, but most importantly, for some food. David Elders got the preview of today's Texas Eat. Again, if he could have just brought back some samples, that would have been great. All right, plus we have some of the best touchdowns, tackles, and interceptions. Our BGC Game of the Week, that's coming up, along with our popular fan cam. That's in just a few moments. The fan cam in a bit, but here's your live cam. Beautiful sunrise today. It's going to be a good day. Low, mid, mid to high 90s. It, I was going to say 90s, 80s. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more. Welcome back. Our big game coverage game of the week featured the Steel Knights battling New Braunfels to open district play. All right, so let's go to the game. Unicorns down 14-3 before scoring, getting within four. But last night's game belonged to Steel. The Knights answered back a long run, punching in from five yards out. Steel scoring five touchdowns in the first half rolling to a 42-24 victory at home. We, we were clicking, clicking, clicking. We still got room to improve. You know, we still got some things to get better at, but we did really good tonight, and it was a great team win. There's going to be ups and there's going to be downs, like Coach Sign says, you know what I mean? There's going to be long runs, there's going to be short ones, but Ben, don't break. And I'm really proud of this team because at any moment, any of us could have just laid our heads down. But I'm really proud of them, and we bent, but we didn't break. Buzzword clicking. Steele's oh. next game is on the road against San Marcos. New Braunfels will also be on the road next week against East Central. And over at Rutledge Stadium, Judson was up big early against East Central. All right, but take a second. Look for it. Check out this catch. Quarterback Elijah seeing what he likes down deep the field. Michael Avery over the shoulder catch. 64-yard touchdown. 
and really just adding to the score there. 37-0 Rockets at that point. The final from Converse, 44 to nothing. And it's time now for Fan Cam, where our fans help us cover one of the big games on Friday nights. Here's our Andrew Seeley with the sights and sounds from the sideline. The Warriors fans are fired up tonight in the Coliseum, ready to host Kerrville Tivy, and the home team gets on the board first thanks to defense. Jackson Hopper comes up with an interception in plus territory. That leads to a 27-yard field goal from Daniel Aranda, so the Warriors now lead 3-0. Next possession, Antlers march right down the field. Handoff goes to Logan Edmonds, and he's in for the one-yard score, part of a 12-0 run from Tyvee, and they go up 12-3. Warriors respond in the second quarter. This time, quarterback Jake Strachan rolls out to the right and finds Mason Kruger in the end zone for the six-yard touchdown, and the extra point is good to make it a 12-10 game. That is the score as fan count departs midway through the second quarter. Piper trailing Kerrville Tyvee 12-10 from the Warrior Coliseum. Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, and we saw a bunch of people out and about last night, and yeah. they were loving the weather, Sarah. It was great. Kudos, Alicia, to reading the oh, yeah. sports Thank like you. a pro. Thank girl. you. Greg Simmons, here I come. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we have two big events. You have the tailgating for UTSA, yeah. and then we talked about the Barbacoa and Big Red Festival. Yes, absolutely, and down in Floresville, they're having the Peanut right. Festival this weekend. The weather is going to be awesome for any and all kind of outdoor activities. A little on the warm side, but hey, we've got low humidity. So again, it's hard to complain, especially after this past summer. 66 degrees out there right now. Just some cirrus clouds up there. Uh, earlier, we had overcast skies before sunrise. So we've been able to see a bit of a clearing this morning, and that's pretty nice out there. 51 uh, degrees is the dew point. So whenever dew points are in the 50s, it feels great out outside. Here's a look at the satellite right now, and we still do have a few clouds out there this morning, especially west of San Antonio toward Del Rio, Yavaldi, Hondo. And as we zoom in here, you can see that most of Bear County is now enjoying clearer skies. It's still 59 in Bulverde, 54 in Comfort, 59 in Bandera, of course, the higher elevations of the hill country, just a smidge cooler, but it is 66 in San Antonio. We're already warming up after a morning low of 64. It's 66, 7 in New Braunfels, Part of me, 67 in Divine, 66 in Hondo, 63 down in Pleasanton. And today is going to be a gorgeous day, as I've been saying. You know, we will have a few of those puffy cumulus clouds in the afternoon. It's going to be in the 80s by about lunch, and then in the afternoon, we'll spend most of our afternoon in the 80s. And the high temperature, 4 or 5 p.m., is going to be right around 88 degrees, and there will be times where it will be breezy. You know, we're going to have winds today from the east northeast. 5 to up to 15 miles per hour, perhaps a gust up to 20 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze out there, but again, nice and dry and comfortable. Here's a look at high temperatures all across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Our average high in San Antonio is 85, so we're going to be a few degrees warmer than that, but not by too much. It'll be 90 in Pleasanton, and by the way, Floresville for the Peanut Festival, it is going to be 90 degrees there too. 85 in Del Rio, 86 in Yavali. It'll be in the low 80s up in Kerrville, 80 in Rock Springs. 89 in New Braunfels and 88 down in Laredo. Now, as far as our weather setup goes, again, I showed you those clouds that are west of San Antonio. When we look at a wider view here, there's actually some rainfall across parts of New Mexico and the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma. Look to the north. You see all of this blue here? Well, these are actually freeze and frost warnings for a good portion of uh, the northern tier of the United States, a killing frost, meaning that growing season is over. And uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of us like the cooler weather, but all that cold air is going to stay to the north, or fortunately, you know, we are from Texas. We like our warmer weather anyway. And even this rain that's occurring in parts of the Panhandle, Oklahoma, and New Mexico is going to stay out of south central Texas. Instead, this low pressure system over Baja, California, is really just going to be giving us some passing clouds here and there. Those high thin cirrus clouds through tomorrow, as you can see on our future cast. This is right around noon tomorrow. We'll have a few of those high thin cirrus clouds. Rainfall will stay up in the panhandle through Midland, Odessa and West Texas. But as we head into the middle of the week, a cold front is going to be moving through the United States. Now, by the time it gets to us in San Antonio, it's going to be a lot weaker, not as strong. And as far as rain goes, really only about a 20% chance for isolated showers. But it is going to be windy behind that front with a stout north wind. So again, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see any big 
big rainmakers from this front, but still a chance for rain shaking up our forecasts a little bit, dropping high temperatures by about five degrees or so. And as we get closer, we'll be able to refine that forecast where you see how cool we get. A lot to still talk about. We've got Fido's forecast, pictures of your pups and the tropics. Tropical Storm Julia heading towards Central America. I'll talk about that in the next half hour. Thank you, Sarah. All right, time now, 818, 67 degrees. Coming up in just moments, Ooh. we're headed to the happiest place in Texas. That's the Texas State <laughs> Fair to check out the best foods from David Elder. That's next on Texas Eats. It's a deep fry, honey butter. We actually dip it in funnel cake, then we fry it, then we inject it with caramel, then we add um, Butterfinger on top, and then we plug it with a big Reese's cup where we put the caramel in, put a little one on top, add Reese's pieces around the top, then put the umbrella on it, then we rain on it with powdered sugar. <laughs> That's why it won right there. All right, come on, Chris. Peanut butter paradise. Peanut Cheers to you. <laughs> That's the bite. Rain on it with the powdered sugar. I love that. That's the best line of the morning. So you did some research ahead of time. Yeah, I was trying to pull it up. I usually bookmark it. So I'm born and raised in Dallas, and the State Fair has been a tradition for our family. This is actually the first year that I broke tradition. Oh. And I'm pretty sad about it. But I can't find the one that I wanted. I know that they have a fried, what is it, charcuterie board? Yeah. It? I don't know if I would try that. You know, it's a lot. Uh, I will say David Elder had some great, stories from the state fair obviously we're gonna have a lot more on texas eats later and throughout the show but i want to make my way up there you have to yeah. the food it's the best all right time now 823 68 degrees out so to come we'll look ahead at what's going on on today's across the crunch today across the alamo city including the barbacoa and big red festival you can't miss it I'm talking about too much food and i'm so hungry <laughs> we'll be right back Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. A lot going on today across the Alamo City. We got the Peanut Festival happening this weekend in Floresville. But the Barbacoa and Big Red Festival is also kicking off, and we can probably assure you it's going to be a good Mouth turnout. is watering. Yeah, it all starts today from 4 to 11 p.m., and then again Sunday from 10 a.m. to midnight. Here's the thing, you can get your tickets right now. $10 for adults, children 12 and under. They get in for free. The festival is at the RJ Music Pavilion on Pleasanton Road. That's on the city south side. You can find all this information on KSAT.com. All right, time now 827, 68 degrees out. Still ahead at 830, a northwest side restaurant goes up in smoke. What we've learned from the scene in the past few hours. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. 830 this morning it is October 8th. It is the fall. It is football season. We got UTSA playing a huge game today. A perfect time to tailgate. Yeah, I think it's our homecoming. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's homecoming game. You're going to be out there? Yes, I'll be making it out there later today. Let's wow. go. It's going to be a little warm, but better. Again, I mentioned I was there like a month ago, mm -hmm. and that was brutal. So I hear there's some wind that'll keep us nice. and. Yeah, Alicia, pointed. give us a little, a little meet meet. Oh, uh, meet me. <laughs> well I was going to do the UTSA chant for you. <laughs> well, you could do that, too. I'll do it after. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, there is going to be a bit of a breeze today, but all in all, it is going to be a warm, pleasant Saturday. And really, this entire weekend is going to be pretty nice for us, too. Hey, Fido's forecast. Take a look at Riley and Opie. Super cute. Look like cuddle bugs. Uh, you know, if you want to send in your pictures of your pups to Fido's Forecast, just scan that QR code right there. And if you're planning on taking your dog for a walk today, it's going to be pretty nice. You know, those clouds have really started to clear out, and so a pleasant day here for us. Partly cloudy in the afternoon and warm, 88 degrees. Really only in the later afternoon do I give it the yellow paw. Be careful because for the smaller pups, that might be a little too warm. But otherwise, it's going to be really great out there. And coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about a few things things. The nice conditions this weekend. I'll show you tomorrow's forecast as well. And it is in some cases a three day weekend for some folks. So I'll show you that as well. And next week, a cool front is going to be moving through Texas. Still some questions on how strong it'll be and rainfall potential. But I'll tell you what we do 
think is going to happen right now. And a check of the tropics. Tropical Storm Julia, almost a hurricane, likely going to be impacting uh, parts of Central America. So we've got to look at all three of these coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters say neon lights could have been the cause of a restaurant fire this morning on the northwest side. So fire inspectors on the scene telling us the lights could have shorted, creating a spark that caused the fire on the roof that spread through the building. Arson was on the scene to try to figure out how this all started. Damages, though, estimated around $5,000. Luckily, though, no one inside at the time, no injuries have been reported. Well, tonight is a very special night. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society hosting the Light the Night event. Very special for so many families in and around San Antonio. Absolutely, and it starts this evening. Jonathan Cotto is live out there with a preview. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Alicia. That's right. Listen, Light the Night is going to be happening tonight, as you mentioned. Right now, not a lot of is happening, but there is setup, and we know that there's going to be thousands of people here at Hemisphere Park to celebrate and pay tribute to those who unfortunately have lost or battled to cancer and those who have survived. And with me to share their testimony, or at least a bit of their testimony, is Mark Diaz, who happened to be 2020's honored hero. Mark, thank you so much for being here with us. I know you drove up all the way from Uvalde to share a little bit of your experience. Talk to me about that. So I was diagnosed back in 2016 with leukemia. Uh, my father had actually had leukemia. Um, ever since I was diagnosed, I've been working with the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. You know, every three minutes, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer, and every nine minutes, someone loses their battle to blood cancer. Um, it's just something that I feel like I have to do just because of the fact that, you know, the Leukemia, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society raises tons of money to help find a cure to blood cancer. You know, um, everything that they do is just so meaningful to me and meaningful to all these other people because of the money that they raise and the research that they're doing to find a cure to blood cancer. Now, Mark, oftentimes we hear of nonprofit organizations raising money for research, raising money for a cause, and uh, we don't always see that manifested as a, as a result, right? Yes. But you are here standing yes. in front of me. You are a direct testimony Correct. of what those funds do and uh, the benefit yes, that the society has on so many people. Now, you were diagnosed at 18. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about that news at that age for so you. it was very tough because i had just graduated high school and you know i was just trying to explore and find myself um and it it kind of came up really quick you know um it, my mom knew as an instinct you know there was something wrong she said hey his dad had leukemia you know and it just came up really fast you know now mark um i know that there isn't anybody out here right now there's a lot of setup happening here we see a lot of the state we're talking about the stage that's going to be set up here in just a few hours but in 2020, we we're just talking about how many people were out and how beautiful it looked to see all the lanterns. Yes, it was very beautiful. It was very beautiful to see everyone united and just seeing everyone to, to raise funds for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Mark, thank you so much for sharing your testimony. I am so happy that you're here thank with you. me today. And uh, we're going to be talking more, so don't right. go anywhere. Right. We have more information, more details coming up in the next half hour. In the meantime, back to you in the studio. Alicia Max. All right, Jonathan, thank you so much. Time now, 835, 68 degrees out. Still ahead to come on GMSA, the OU Texas rivalry is back at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. What Longhorns coach is saying ahead of today's huge matchup? We know a bunch of people actually at the game, so it'll be exciting to see how it all fares after the break, though, taking young women where they've never gone before. Coming up, a foundation that supports teens teaching girls how to dive. And taking a live look with live cam, it is 69 degrees. It's going to be a beautiful day. We talked about tailgating, oh, yeah. um, barbacoa, a lot peanut of Peanut festival. Yeah, I keep missing the peanut festival. My goodness. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. We'll be back with more. Welcome back. Back here at home, a Texas dad in Conroe near Houston turned himself into a detective turned himself into a detective to help find evidence in the hit and run crash that seriously injured his son. ABC's Morgan Norwood tells us how the dad turned to social media all in search for answers. This morning, a Texas dad turned detective. It was a desperation, the frustration. The moment Nicholas Andrade learned his son, also named Nicholas, was injured in a hit and run crash, he wasted no time going to the intersection where it happened. You know, I prayed asking the Lord to show me what I need to see to help find the person that hit my son. Pretty soon, the pieces started coming together, literally. I found uh, the headlight 
bring to a Jeep. And I also found a license plate cover, um, part of the license plate cover frame. Andrande took photos of the parts and then turned to social media for tips. Somebody on Facebook came out and they said, look, we have a dash cam footage. This video shows the white Jeep that Andrande's son says slammed into him. You can even hear the impact, which happens off camera. Andrande says he posted that video to Facebook and neighbors then started sending more footage. He said deputies eventually tracked down a Jeep. This morning, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office releasing a statement to ABC News saying the suspect, a juvenile, came forward with her mother and confessed. Adding a thorough and complete investigation was conducted by our deputies without unreasonable delay. Recovery is far from over. Nicholas Andrande suffered broken bones and a spinal injury. We just wanted justice for our child. And the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office telling me the juvenile faces a felony charge of failure to stop and render aid. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Also this morning, some drama with the Miss USA pageant. Some contestants are questioning the legitimacy of the pageant. Arbany Gabriel, a fashion designer and previous Miss Texas title holder, was the first Filipino American to take home the crown this year. But some of Gabriel's competitors are speaking out, accusing organizers of favoritism. That's including Miss Montana, one of the contestants who actually left the stage during the crowning moment. Some also saying that Gabriel was flown out to a Mexican med spa in July, shortly after getting crowned, getting treatment at the New Zook Resort. That's a Miss USA pageant sponsor and alleging she received preferential treatment. Gabriel insists she won the title fair and square. And it began with one woman's vision combining a love of the water and passion for science with a desire to provide opportunities to young black women in underserved communities. Now it's grown to four organizations in three different states. This morning we're learning more about Black Girls Dive. In this community pool, they just don't teach the freestyle and backstroke. Weekly lessons focus on science and self-confidence. Normally I do this and blow on my nose. Scuba diving takes trust in your instructor. Everybody should have their full face mask over their right shoulder. And trust in yourself. I got a little distracted because I was just like, OMG, I'm breathing underwater. The Black Girls Dive Foundation is the brainchild of Nevada Winrow. It's like my safe space. I just feel relaxed in water. But for the rest of the week on land, it's Dr. Winrow. My career, I'm by training, I'm a pediatric neuropsychologist. Winro combined her passion for diving and her love of science in a way that lifts up young black women. I think especially now with the world that we live in, I think diversity is a big thing. Just black girls having the confidence to just like swim. Winro says diving requires young black women to rethink cultural practices and overcome a long history of racial exclusion. So historically, blacks were not allowed to go into swimming pools. Um, and it created a, a, some type of fear, and that fear gets perpetuated from generation to generation. The training culminates in a yearly dive trip in exotic places like the Bahamas. Along the way, the girls learn about ecosystems and water conservation. All of the girls that come through Black Girl Side Foundation not only get into college, but they actually get into their reach, their reach school. What an amazing program. So it costs about $3,000 a year to support each girl. That includes insurance, equipment, and travel. So the organization does a lot of grant writing and fundraising as well, all to cover the cost for each individual girl. So far, there are four U.S. chapters, two in Maryland, one in Georgia, and one in New Jersey. It is such an amazing organization. i got to be jealous, though. I mean, headed out there, going diving? I know. It'd be great for San Antonio or just Texas in general to have that organization. Oh, yeah. It would be. Absolutely. Guys, yesterday was a little gloomy. Okay, we had clouds pretty much all day. But take a look outside right now. Sunshine, beautiful sun. And this weekend is going to be filled with sun. Some passing clouds here and there, but more sunshine than yesterday. It's 66 degrees outside. Winds are calm at the moment, but we are going to see winds pick up a little bit today. Uh, occasionally, a wind gusts from the east northeast up to about 20 miles per hour. Take a look out at temperatures early this morning. It is a little cooler up in the hill country as it typically is uh, this time of year. 58 in Kerrville, 55 in Comfort, but it's already 72 in Castroville, so we're quick warming up with a little bit of sun 63 in Bulverde, 66 in Hondo 68 in Pleasanton 63 in Lost Maples take a look across the nation 
Yeah, winter is coming across the nation. In fact, we have got areas that are below freezing, frost warnings throughout all parts of the Midwest. For us, though, in San Antonio, we're in the warmer tier and we're going to stay that way. There is are some indications we'll get a front this next week, but it may not drop temperatures by all that much. We'll talk about more on that in just a little bit later, but look at Lubbock. It's 49 chilly degrees in Lubbock and it's raining. So cold rain up there in the panhandle uh, of Texas today. And speaking of the panhandle of Texas and that rain, it's because of this low pressure system closed low out in Baja, California. A and if this were to move east, it would be bringing us some rain in San Antonio, but unfortunately, the only thing it's really going to bring us is a little bit of cloud cover. So we're going to see some passing cirrus clouds, especially during the day tomorrow and this afternoon. In fact, this afternoon, one of our forecast models is showing a little bit of potentially light rain, but I don't buy that. And the reason I don't buy it is because we are very dry at the surface. Dew points are in the 40s and 50s. That is very dry. So if even the clouds produced a little bit of light rain, most of it would evaporate before it hits the ground. So perhaps a sprinkle or two this afternoon for some people, but majority of us are going to be completely dry. It's going to warm up quickly as it is right now. At 10, it'll be 76. Noon, it'll be 81. And for the afternoon high temperature, 88. We will have some cumulus clouds this afternoon, partly cloudy skies. East northeast winds, as I mentioned, 5 to 15 miles per hour. And with the sunset, temperatures will fall into the 70s tonight. So a great, great evening for any kind of outdoor activities. Generally, though, this afternoon's high temperatures, 89 in New Braunfels and again, 90 in Floresville, 90 in Poteet, 89 in Divine. The low to mid 80s up in the Hill Country, Bernie Boulevard will be at about 85 degrees. Now, as we look ahead to this week, the rest of the weekend, it's going to be pretty similar. 88 today, 87 tomorrow, and for some, a three day weekend. So Monday will be 87 and pretty pleasant. And then on Thursday, we get a front moving through. And I mentioned it's not going to be all that strong, but it is going to be noticeable. It'll drop our high temperatures by about 5 to 10 degrees, and there's still some time to refine that forecast. The front could end up being a little bit stronger, so we'll keep you updated. But this is what we think right now. Thursday, an isolated shower is possible with that front, but no big changes. All right, Tropical Storm Julia expected to become a hurricane and impact Nicaragua by tomorrow and move through Central America. Hurricane warnings in effect for the Nicaraguan coast but that's not going to have any impact on the U.S. coastline. Again, uh, pretty warm over the next few days, but still comfortable, and that front will arrive on Thursday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 848, 69 degrees out. Up next on GMSA, the UTSA Roadrunners had a huge <laughs> matchup today in the Dome. That's against the team they beat for last year's conference title. Runners dominating on offense once again. Second year in a row, they're putting on a show every time they hit the field. Yeah, after a huge road win against Middle Tennessee, UTSA is tied for the lead in the FBS for passing yards. The road runners are averaging over 365 yards a game. Ooh, so those numbers putting quarterback Frank Harris in the spotlight through five games this season, already throwing for 1,724 yards. And get this. 12 touchdowns, all while completing almost 70% of his passes. Harris has another four touchdowns on the ground to go with a touchdown catch. So looking ahead to this evening, the Roadrunners will need every point possible to take down Western Kentucky team they had to beat to win their first conference USA title. I think Olan is doing a great job just giving me time back there. You know, the receivers just... You know, they're freaks. They go out there and make plays. Um, but I definitely want to shout out to them for getting a run game going. Uh, Brady and Trey, they did a great job of hitting the holes and just accelerating. So I definitely give a shout out to the O-line for that. All right, so kickoff at the Dome set for 5 o'clock. UTSA and Western Kentucky coming in with the same record of 3-2. and two. Got to give a shout out to Frank Harris because I think he was at the Spurs game the other night. Throw it launching. I'm going to say launching. Launching t-shirts into the crowd. It was awesome to see. You're going to be at the tailgate. Yes. Meet, meet. There you go. <laughs>
All right, time now, 8.53, 70 degrees out. Up next, UTSA isn't the only school with a huge matchup today. The rivalry is back at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. We're getting you ready for the OU Texas Showdown after this. in all of college football. The Texas Longhorns are prepping for the annual Red River rivalry against the OU Sooners, and that's happening at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. For the Horns, there's questions of those losses. Texas head coach Steve Sarkeesian, well, he's worried the players might take Oklahoma too lightly. I don't know how we could ever think to do that. Um, this, this rivalry, this game, um, and what it all stands for and the way these two teams plays have have played in this game for decades uh, we know more than ever uh, we're, we're going to get the best version of them uh, we need to make sure that they get the best version of us uh, they're a very talented team they're extremely well coached team hey we, we go through ebb and flows of a season new coaching staff new team I w we went through it too, but uh, this team's really good, and they play really hard, and they're really well coached, and uh, we have our work cut out for us, and we need to play a very good football game to be victorious. You can watch the Texas OU game live on KSAT 12 today with kickoff set for 11 a.m. So we have GMSA, we have Texas Seats, and then we have Texas football. Quinn Ewers is going to put on a show. I'm very excited. If he's there, right? Yeah. Like if he starts. I'm cautiously optimistic. All right. Time now, 857, 70 degrees out. We got the pollen count in. Sarah Spivey's going to have it in just a few moments. And still ahead at 9, could being hopeful save your life? We'll check out the science of hope and how it can impact your health. And almost time for Light the Night. Jonathan Cotto joining us live with what you can expect, how you can still take part and help out in tonight's festivities. Fire this morning on the city's northwest side. What firefighters and investigators say was the cause. And taking a live look at City Cam, it's sunny out there and no clouds. We'll be back with Sarah's. Well, you'll hear from Sarah in just a bit. We're not going anywhere. We just started. <laughs> no, we just started. Good morning. It is nine o'clock this morning. It is Saturday, October eighth. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us, your weekend with us. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm happy to be here. Good oh, morning to you, Matt. You know what? We officially hit 70 degrees. Is that too warm to start the day for no, you? No, this is great. This okay. Is, this is a nice start. Okay. Right, Sarah? Absolutely. Would you agree? I totally agree, Alicia. <laughs> and we started off in the low 60s, so we're warming up already. Today is going to be a great day and, in fact, a beautiful weekend. One caveat to that. If you're allergic to ragweed, ragweed is high today. This is actually the highest it's been. We are in the middle of the peak of ragweed season. Usually we start to see ragweed season taper off by mid to late October. So it's a short season, but still, there's a reason for your wheezing. It's ragweed. Molds are low at 270. Outside right now, we have got beautiful clear skies, a nice welcome change from yesterday when we had complete cloud cover. It's 72 degrees out there, and those winds are starting to pick up. I've been saying all morning we're going to have a wind from the east northeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. So we do have a bit of a breeze out there, low humidity, and really nice. Hey, after a two year hiatus, the Barbacoa and Big Red Festival is back, baby. Today it's going on from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. at R&J Music Pavilion. Here's your forecast for that. It's going to be warm this afternoon, 88 degrees. But once the sun sets after 7 o'clock, temperatures will be in the 70s. Great weather today. Great weather all weekend. Tomorrow we're going to be at 87 for the high temperature. And coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how there is uh, the potential for a front this upcoming week. I'll tell you how strong that front will be and whether or not it's going to bring us any much needed rain coming up in just a bit. Alicia Max. Thank you, Sarah. A lot going on this morning. We first told you about the story at 6 a.m. San Antonio firefighters say neon lights could have been the cause of a restaurant fire on the northwest side. Firefighters and investigators on the scene telling us the lights could have shorted, creating a spark, and that is what caused the flames on the roof that spread to the building. Arson investigators on the scene trying to figure out how exactly it started, but right now we can tell you the damage is estimated at about $5,000. Luckily, no one there at the time of the fire. No injuries have been reported. A former San Antonio police detective who mishandled more than 100 sex assault cases 
is now avoiding prison time. Bear County court records show Kenneth Valdez was sentenced to four years probation after mishandling around 130 cases nearly five years ago. He also has to pay over $1,300 in fines. Our KSAT investigates team tried speaking with the DA's office and Valdez's attorney, but have not heard back. After almost two months, a capital murder suspect is back in police custody this morning. Carnes County Sheriff's deputies arresting 37 year old Richard Montez at a hotel just yesterday. Montez re indicted by the Bear County Grand Jury for allegedly killing 14 year old Angel Gabata and 69 year old Benito Gallegos back in 2018. And the countdown to election day is on and on your screen we'll have some information for those important dates. Here are some of those. Next Tuesday is the last day to register to vote. October 24th kicks off the first day of early voting and October 28th is the last day to apply for a mail in ballot. Election day is November 8th. Well, happening today, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society hosting Light the Night. It is an evening walk lit with lanterns, paying tribute to patients, survivors, and those who have had to battle cancer. A night of healing for the community. Light the Night will be happening at Hemisphere Park, and that's exactly where we find Jonathan Cotto with more on what to expect tonight. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Alicia, Max. You know, things are starting to pick up. Just uh, a couple of minutes ago, a group, a wave of volunteers were already checking in. So that is good news and a beautiful sight to see that they are yes. up and early and Excited. ready to just take ch charge. Now, Joanna, we're here at a different part of Hemisphere Park and behind us are some photos. Talk to me a little bit about this. Absolutely. So this is our first year back in person after COVID, and we absolutely wanted to make it special for our participants. So this year we got this idea from some of our other colleagues up north. We were doing a mission mile. So we had an opportunity for our fundraising teams, if they hit a certain level, that we could feature their loved ones either in honor of surviving their battle or either in memory because they are unfortunately no longer with us. So if you come out and you walk with us tonight, you are gonna see these beautiful photos and these are also keepsakes for those family and friends for them to take home as a memory of Light the Night and participating with us. And would love to point out that we have some of our very special honored heroes on here as well. Um, we have our 2020 honored hero, Mark Diaz, um, gorgeous young man that we just heard from a little while ago. And then new this year, we have Jarvis Henderson Jr. Jarvis Henderson. Yes. So cute. He is adorable. He's our honored hero for this year. He is seven years old. He literally was just declared in remission just a few weeks ago. Wow. Uh, Praise we're, God. We're absolutely, we're so grateful. And they are also benefits of LLS financial aid. So again, people that you've seen on here have either been helped by LLS or they are in touch with us, um, but we can't spread the mission enough. We're here to help. So we hope people reach out to us in need. I am so happy to hear that. And I'm so happy that you are here, Joanne. And, uh, but let's talk about the different lanterns. So folks, if you're coming out tonight, you're gonna see different colored lanterns and they all mean something different. Yes, absolutely. So we have three different colored lanterns. Um, the white lanterns, one of my favorites for sure. We'd love to see more of them. Those are for our survivors of cancer. And if you're attending tonight, if type of a cancer, we'd love for you to be here and come and get your white lantern. We also have survivor t-shirts for you, no fundraising required. We also have our red lanterns like my shirt, um, and that is if you're here to support the mission, you want to see an end to blood cancer, which I believe we all do. And then also for those who have lost somebody to a cancer, we have our gold lantern, and that is in memory um, and also honoring their, their time with us, unfortunately, although they're not here with us anymore. So to see all those together, it's beautiful. I can't wait. I know we're going to have our entire Night Beat crew here tonight. Yes. So, folks, you don't want to miss out. If you want to register for the event, you can head over to our website, ksat.com. Look for the code and register to participate here. Again, we're going to have our Night Beat crew on the grounds here at Hemisphere Park. And also, if you would like to hear more on Jarvis Henderson's story, Max Massey did an incredible story covering his testimony. You can head on over to our website as well, kset.com. Folks, the Light the Night event is going to be taken off tonight at 6, so make sure you don't miss out. Back to you in the studios, Max and Alicia. Thank you, Jonathan. And like Jonathan was saying, still a lot of time for you guys to participate, so pull out the phone, scan the QR code. If you scan this QR code, it'll take you to the donations and registrations page on ksat.com. All right, well, 
This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Olivia Newton-John's family taking up her torch, raising awareness for breast cancer. After the singer and actress passed away from the disease in August, the family continues to raise money for the Cancer and Research Center. She started Eva Pilgrim Has More. This morning, Olivia Newton-John's family honoring her legacy, organizing a walk in her hometown of Melbourne, Australia, to raise money for the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Wellness and Research Center she started in 2012. Olivia and I were so fortunate to have access to a broad variety of wellness treatments. And her dream with the Olivia Newton-John Wellness Center many years ago was to have Australians going through cancer have access to these similar types of treatments. Newton-John's husband, John Easterling, donating $300,000 to the cause while her daughter and niece continue the important work she started. I feel the torch has been passed and this is my mission and my passion and I'm so grateful to be doing it with my beautiful cousin yeah. for my mother. The late Grammy-winning singer and actress first diagnosed with breast cancer in 1992, dedicating the last years of her life to finding treatments and supporting others battling cancer. To think that we could help people to live in a world where cancer was just something that you treated like diabetes or asthma or the flu or, you know, it was something that you could live well with. And that was Eva Pilgrim reporting. Time now, 9.09, 72 degrees out. Today on Texas Eats, David Elder takes us to an iconic pizza joint in Houston. So much food, we need samples. All right, coming <laughs> up next, a local group teaming up with the Magic Theater, bringing awareness about dyslexia. We're going to explain how in just a bit. All right, and a live look with live cam. Beautiful. 72 degrees right now, absolutely beautiful sunrise. And it's going to be a beautiful day already. We'll be back with more. Welcome back. Dysle dyslexia affects 20% of Americans, and one group in San Antonio is teaching people about the learning disability. The group Celebrate Dyslexia and Magic Theater are teaming up to put on an original play titled Eddie and Vinny. Dyslexia really affects reading, writing, and spelling, and most of the time in school, that is what we are grading. So it is an opportunity to really build a community and spark this conversation and this dialogue with this issue that really affects one in five people. You can get tickets for Eddie and Vinny right now. You can buy them at magictheater.org. The play runs from October 15th to the 28th. All right, time now, 913, 72 degrees out. And Sarah Spivey, you said it best earlier, gorgeous out there. Yeah, I think that's the, the theme this weekend for us. Cool mornings and warm afternoons with low humidity. And after yesterday's clouds, it is really nice to see the sun. And we're going to continue to have a partly cloudy to mostly sunny weekend for us. Right now outside, it's mostly sunny in San Antonio, 72 degrees. Winds are starting to pick up from the east northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. And an important number here is the dew point. The dew point is 52. Anytime dew points are less than 60 degrees, that's when it feels great outside and it feels that way out there right now. As we take a look at the satellite and temperatures, you can see that there are some areas of clouds, mainly west of San Antonio toward Del Rio, Rock Springs. But generally, most of us are enjoying at least a little bit more sun than we saw yesterday. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom into Bear County right on the northwest side, right near Holotus. That's where we've got some clouds early this morning. And you can see that in southern Wilson County and in Gonzalez County, we've got some clouds there too. Otherwise, temperatures are in the upper 60s, low 70s. That's after this morning's lows in the 50s in the hill country and the low 60s around San Antonio. So we're already up by some nearly 10 degrees from the start of the day. That's going to be the trend. Some puffy cumulus clouds working their way in this afternoon. Otherwise, it's going to be in the 80s this afternoon in your KSAT 12 hour forecast. We'll be looking at a high temperature of 88 degrees this afternoon. So a little bit warmer than seasonally average, but still 
pretty pleasant. And then after sunset, close to seven, temperatures are going to fall into the 70s. A lot of people going to be out and about this evening, and it's going to be great for any kind of evening activities. During the afternoon, though, here's what it's going to feel like outside. 83 in Kerrville, 89 in New Braunfels, 86 in Uvalde, 88 in Creasa Springs, 90 in Beeville, 90 in Pleasanton, and 85 in Del Rio. All right, a quick check of our weather setup here and a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, across parts of the panhandle, we're actually seeing a little bit of rain, and it's cold up there in the panhandle right now. It's in the 40s in Lubbock, 49 degrees in Lubbock. Cold rain up there, but really most of the very cold air is across parts of the Midwest. Uh, we've got freeze and frost warnings in place, killing freezes and frosts. So seasons are changing, even some snow up in Canada, but the cold air is going to stay to our north uh, as this trough of low pressure is not really unfortunately going to bring us any rain. It is, however, going to be bringing us a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow. We're talking those high thin cirrus clouds and we'll continue to see some rain for the panhandle and parts of West Texas through tomorrow. Just not going to make it to San Antonio, unfortunately. So I mentioned that there's freeze and frost warnings up across parts of the northern tier of the United States. We're going to get a cold front this week. But there are still some questions on its strength and whether or not it's going to be bringing us any rain. For now, what I think is going to happen is that we'll have a small window for rainfall pretty much on Thursday morning. Uh, isolated showers possible whenever that front moves through. Not a good washout for us, unfortunately, and it is going to become windy behind the front. But as for temperatures, probably only a 5 to 10 degree temperature drop. So this is not going to be that crisp, cool fall air that we're waiting for, unfortunately. But it is going to bring us a small shot at rain, 20% on Thursday. And, and again, dropping our high temperatures by some t 5 degrees or so. Uh, so it'll be windy on Thursday, too, behind that front. Of course, we could be seeing that front be stronger uh, as we get a little bit closer, the forecast models are going to come into more agreement. So we'll continue to keep you updated. Keep that case out weather authority at Pandy coming up in the next half hour. Of course, Fido's forecast pictures of your pups and a look at tropical storm Julia in the Atlantic. I mean, a five degree difference. That's yeah, good. There you go. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Time now, 917, 72 degrees out. All right, so you might know her from one of the best movies, Mean Girls. Lindsay Lohan will be gracing our screens for a holiday appearance on a new film that's featured on Netflix. We'll tell you about it coming up. She looks great. Mm hmm. All Good right. You're back. You know what also looks great? That pizza. If everything we're seeing on Texas Eats. David Elder headed to Houston, showing us some of the best tasting pizza across Texas. We're going to explain in just a bit. And if you're feeling lucky, last night's Texas lottery draw for pick three, one, zero, six, fireball, one, daily four, six, seven, two, two, fireball, zero. Your cash five, one, five, 13, 16, 23. And here we go, Mega Millions, six, 11, 29, 36, 55, big number 21, Mega Pyre two. Good luck, we'll be right back. I want to start with this pizza right here in front of us because it's something special. You got a little Texas twist to it, right? Definitely. It's our cowbell special. We started smoking our own brisket here on site. We do it once a week. When it runs out, it runs out like most good barbecue places. But it's cowbell uh, sauce. We make our own barbecue sauce. Barbecue smoked brisket. We top it with what we call the fixins, which is jalapenos and red onions. Oh. And a little bit of cheddar cheese. Right. I was going to say, a little cheddar kind of adds a little more salty punch to it, yeah. right? I love the name too. Here we go. This is the cowbell. Well, cheers to you, sir. Yes, sir. Look at this. I love how we both snapped it. <laughs> you go for that New York fold, that's the bite. Oh, wow. Ooh. What are we thinking? Mm. Oh, okay. I'm more just traditional. Just okay. giving you the cheese and cheese lots of marinara okay. sauce. That's fair. Yeah. No I love the brisket on there, though. I don't uh, know. Too much? No, too much. Okay. 
Yes. Time now, 923, 72 degrees. We're going to be talking about your ring in just a few moments. I wish. <laughs> so this pink diamond has been sold in Hong Kong. We'll tell you for how much when we come back. And let me just tell you, it's a lot. Good morning and welcome back. So we were talking about it throughout the morning. It is an 11 and a half carat pink diamond ring sold for a world record price at auction. So take a look. No, this is not the same ring Elisa Barrera is wearing. Hers is blue. <laughs> so this was sold on Friday for $57.7 million. That is more than $5 million per carat. It shattered the previous record of nearly $2.7 million per carat for a fancy vivid pink diamond sold back in 2018. The flawless Williamson Pink Star Diamond Found in the Williamson Mine in Tanzania, one of the oldest operating diamond mines across the world, the bidding was live streamed, quickly reduced to three participants. Someone at the Hong Kong Convention Center where the auction was being held ended up being the highest bidder. My goodness, I wish I had that ring. Throw this up. <laughs> All right, Lindsay Lohan will be home for Christmas, at least on the screen. The actress, who hasn't had a leading role in a major film in close to a decade, is starring in Falling for Christmas. The Netflix movie has Lohan portraying a recently engaged hotel heiress who suffers from amnesia following a skiing accident. As you probably have guessed, Lohan's character starts to fall for the man who is helping her recover, and that's played by Cord Overstreet. Lohan not only acts, but also sings, and she sings a version of Jingle Bell Rock in the rom-com. Didn't she also sing that in Mean Girls? I think she did. When she's on the stage? There you go. She's making a comeback. Love it. Time now, 928, 72 degrees out. A lawsuit against baby formula and how you might be able to get some free cash if you bought it in the past five years. And in the next half hour, a Texas father turned into a detective all to help out his son, why he felt he had to do this and what he got in return. We're going to explain. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 9.31 this morning. It is October 8th. There is so much going on across the Alamo City, across Texas, and across the country. I want to highlight UTSA. You're going to the tailgate later. UTSA, yeah, I'm so excited for that. I hope they make a big win. And Sarah, I was thinking the theme song for today could be Here Comes the Sun, since yesterday it was a little cloudy. I like that. Here comes Doo -doo -doo -doo. the sun. Yeah, absolutely. The sun is out and hey, you guys have really answered the call. Pictures of your pups for Fido's forecast. Not only do I love these pictures of the dogs, but we also get to see where everyone's from. This is Astrid in Del Rio, the weather dog. Take a look at four-year-old blue Aust Australian Shepherd with their tongue out. Says, good morning, San Antonio, owned by Martha and Darren Russell, who live in Lake Hills out near Medina Lake. Take a look at this. This is Boo Boo and little Charlie waiting patiently for their bites of banana. And another beautiful German Shepherd, Loki, loving the cooler weather. I wonder if Loki's doing some time jumps. <laughs> It's, a sh it's about the show, Loki. Okay, Fido's <laughs> forecast, <laughs> if, as you're taking the dog for a walk today, know that uh, we're going to be warm this afternoon with high temperatures in the upper 80s, but generally today you got the green paw. We're gonna have low humidity. The dogs are gonna love it. I'm gonna love it. If you want to add a picture of your dog, scan that QR code right there. That will take you to our KSAT Connect feature, which also you can show weather pictures too. Really comes in handy for us during severe weather season. This weekend, pleasant weather though, low humidity. Looking ahead to next week, a cool front does move through Texas and there's some questions about its strength and whether or not it'll bring us any rain. I'll go over those in just a bit and we'll take a look at Tropical Storm Julia, which has its sights set on parts of Central America. All of this coming up in a few minutes. Max Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. Happening today, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society hosting a very special event. It is Light the Night. It's an evening walk lit with lanterns, paying tribute to patients, survivors, and those who have had to battle through cancer. It's going to be a beautiful night. Light the Night will be happening at Hemispheric tonight. Hemisphere Park, our Jonathan Cotto has more on what to expect. Good morning, Jonathan. 
Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Max. We are ready to light the night. I know it's only 9.33 roughly, but we are ready to go. The volunteers are here. Everything is underway. And I've been hanging out with Mark, the 2020 honored survivor, honored hero. Mark, thank you so much for being thank with us. Guys. We know you drove all the way up from Uvalde, so we appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Now, Mark, earlier we were learning a little bit about your testimony. Um, Tell us again how it feels to be here and uh, be a participant in tonight's Light the Night event. You know, like I said earlier, every three minutes um, someone gets diagnosed with a blood cancer and every nine minutes someone loses their battle. Um, so it just means a lot to me as a cancer survivor to do what I can do and help out and help raise funds and money to find a cure to cancer. Now, Mark, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society raises a lot of money. We know we just got word earlier that uh, we are reaching $1.2 million, which is a little bit more than what the society was expecting. So, folks, we are on the right track today. So please make those donations. Now, Mark, your picture yes. is right here. Now, earlier you were telling me you were feeling a little emotional at yeah. seeing this. Yeah. What's going through your mind? So I think it just means a lot to me just because, you know, just to be a survivor is, is um, an honor, you know, um, and it means a lot to me to have um, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society just, you know, do things like this to raise funds to find a cure to blood cancer. Um, I think that w w with how they're doing, they're going to get there. Mark, thank you so much for joining us once again. We wish you absolutely the best thank and i'm so happy that you have this testimony to share thank with the you. world it's truly incredible folks the leukemia and lymphoma society they do an incredible work for the community and tonight we are going to be lighting the night our night b team will be here you can head on over to keysat.com look for that qr code that way you can register i know that if you do you'll be getting one of these really cool blinking wristbands i think they're wristbands you can use it however you'd like, but it's really cool. It's really neat. And we'll have those for you. The society is already reaching $1.2 million. So make sure you donate and help them exceed that, that number. Back to you in the studios. Alicia, Max. Thank you, Jonathan. As, as he was saying, it is so easy to step up and help out. Here at KSET, we want to invite you to spread some of that hope right there at Hemisphere. If you scan this QR code, it'll take you to the donations and registrations page on KSAT.com. All right, so you could be getting money if you bought infant formula in just the last five years. So this is the result of several class action lawsuits. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz tells us why and how to get the money. Infant formula powder turned liquid gold as parents have scrambled to find it. Every scoop and ounce matters. Now parents who bought certain Enfamil formulas can claim their piece of an $8 million lawsuit settlement. The allegation that the containers didn't make as much formula as the label claimed, about 10% less. Families that bought the formulas between 2017 and last June may now get up to $15 back without proof of purchase, $45 with proof. That deadline is October 30th. Bought another brand? PBM Nutritionals also settled similar claims that they shortened people. Several brands are included, Walmart's Parents' Choice, Sam's Members Mark, Target's Up and Up, and others. People who bought the formula as far back as 2017 can claim up to $30 with proof, $10 without. That deadline, November 30th. It's hardly a cash cow, but if you bought Fairlife milk products, ice cream, butter, yogurt, you might be due as much as $100. The company resolved claims that they mistreated cows that they promised got extraordinary care. The deadline to file a claim is December 27th. None of these companies is admitting any wrongdoing by settling these lawsuits. If you're eligible, you can file your claims easily online. We have links on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. In today's morning headlines, three people were shot just outside an Ohio high school stadium during a football game. So take a look. This all happened yesterday in Toledo. This is outside of Whitmer High School. Police there saying two adults and one student were shot, taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. A witness on the scene saying there was about eight minutes left in the game. That is when the gunfire went off. Now, the game was paused. Masses of people reportedly ran to the field house, all trying to take cover. Complete chaos. And what were you thinking? I just had to find my baby. Right now, police still investigating, trying to figure out why this all happened and who is responsible.
And in Minnesota, four teenagers are in police custody after multiple guns were found in their car and a high school parking lot during a homecoming game. According to police, the four people arrested did not have school IDs, so they were turned away at the entrance. As they returned to their car, officers said a bystander overheard them talking about guns and actually watched one of the guys take it out. That bystander then called police. A spokesperson with the school said officers will continue to work on security for their football games. A father using his own detective work, doing all he can, trying to find evidence in a hit and run crash that seriously injured his son. ABC's Morgan Norwood joins us with more on how the dad turned to social media in his search for answers. This morning, a Texas dad turned detective. It was a desperation, the frustration. The moment Nicholas Andrade learned his son, also named Nicholas, was injured in a hit and run crash, he wasted no time going to the intersection where it happened. You know, I prayed, asking the Lord to show me what I needed to see to help find the person that hit my son. Pretty soon, the pieces started coming together, literally. I found the, the headlight ring to a Jeep, and I also found a license plate cover, uh, part of the license plate cover frame. Andrande took photos of the parts and then turned to social media for tips. Somebody on Facebook came out and they said, look, we have a dash cam footage. This video shows the white Jeep that Andrande's son says slammed into him. You can even hear the impact, which happens off camera. Andrande says he posted that video to Facebook and neighbors then started sending more footage. He said deputies eventually tracked down a Jeep. This morning, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office releasing a statement to ABC News saying a suspect, a juvenile, came forward with her mother and confessed, adding a thorough and complete investigation was conducted by our deputies without unreasonable delay. Recovery is far from over. Nicholas Andrade suffered broken bones and a spinal injury. We just wanted justice for our child. And the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office telling me the juvenile faces a felony charge of failure to stop and render aid. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now, 941, 74 degrees out. Famous heavy metal singer Ozzy Osbourne is entering the cosmetics field. Oh. An eyeshadow palette shaped like a coffin. We'll tell you more about it. I do need to up my makeup game. Maybe that's the answer. <laughs> All right, one woman using the power of hope to survive. Why researchers say that hope can help so many people. We're gonna explain. It's already 74 degrees outside. It's gonna be a beautiful day. It's off to a wonderful start. More on Sarah Spivey's forecasts coming up. Good morning and welcome back. Being hopeful doesn't just feel good. Science shows it can actually improve your health and even save your life. It can also give you a reason to get up in the morning, even when life seems to hit you hard. This morning, we're learning from one woman about how to unleash the power of hope in your own life. And I was going to my house and I came upon a really bad accident and I stopped to render aid. A car came down the highway and crashed into us and I was crushed. The next memory Jamie Blanick has is waking up in the ICU. Her right leg gone, her left leg crushed. I was an active person and I was a model. I traveled, I owned a business. Jamie lost a lot, but she never lost hope. I've gone through this whole process wanting to reach my goals. Social science researchers at Arizona State University found that hopeful people are able to set goals easier identify ways to reach those goals and achieve those goals. Jamie's trauma surgeon, Daniel Stahl, he sees how hope makes a huge impact in the ER. And there's also a hope, a hope that as a trauma surgeon, you have to instill to say, even though this terrible thing happened to you, we're gonna, we're gonna fix what we can fix. He believes honesty and positivity can change outcomes. So I think when they hear that from their surgeon, it, it does, it instills a lot of hope. Research shows you can learn to be more hopeful by taking small steps to reach long-term success. Check in with yourself regularly. Make sure your goal is still what you want. Hope takes practice, and it's easier to have it if you foster a culture of hope. Surrounding yourselves with others who hold your optimistic view. On the 10-month anniversary of Jamie's accident on her birthday, Jamie reached her goal of getting back out on her snowboard. I survived for a reason and the future is very bright. 
amazing story and can't believe she's back out there. Really crazy. It just proves, I mean, small goals do help because you get to see your success. You don't have to set a huge, huge goal. That's true. Very inspiring story. Uh, All right, now to weather. Already a beautiful start. The sun was just beaming into mm -hmm. my desk area where you just blinding, you know? <laughs> yeah, we finally got some sun. You know, yesterday was pretty cloudy. Take a look outside with live cam. I got a crane in my shot in the left hand <laughs> of your screen there, but it just goes to show you this camera is way up there. It's 72 degrees out there. Winds are starting to pick up from the north northeast at 10 miles per hour. We could occasionally have a gust up to 20 miles per hour from the east northeast today, and it is just comfortable out there this morning. It's 72 in New Braunfels, already 79 though in Castroville, 73 Rio Medina, 71 in Kerrville, 73 at the Stinson area down in the south part of Bear County and 75 in Pleasanton. When we look at a wide view here of the nation, you can really see that the seasons are starting to change. We've got temperatures in the 30s across parts of the Central Plains and even in Lubbock, it's, it's 48 degrees in Lubbock right now. They're actually dealing with a cold rain this morning morning. Pretty miserable up there in the panhandle. Uh, now, unfortunately, we're not going to see any kind of rain from this system. Uh, this is a low pressure system out in Baja, California. It's going to stay there. It's not going to move any closer to us. So unfortunately, no rain for us here in South Central Texas from this. But, you know, even though we've got complete sunny skies right now, toward the later afternoon, we'll have some puffy cumulus clouds. And this particular forecast model has been showing some sprinkles out there. You know, maybe, maybe there will be a sprinkle or two, but the thing is it is just so dry at the surface. Dew points are in the low 50s. That's toward the bottom of our scale here. That even if that uh, upper level low was to spark off some showers up high in the atmosphere, most of that would evaporate before it even hits the ground. A lot like yesterday. Yesterday we did have some sprinkles with the cloudiness, but no real rain really around San Antonio. Here's your forecast for your Saturday, 81 by by noon, have that lunch outside. It's going to be gorgeous. Puffy cumulus clouds in the afternoon, 88 for the high temperature. East northeast winds a touch breezy at times at 5 to 15 miles per hour. A lot of people planning to be out tonight after sunset at 7 11. It's going to be pretty cool and comfortable temperatures in the 70s. Now, looking at the high temperatures locally in your neighborhood, it'll be 86 in Bandera, 89 in New Braunfels, 89 in Floresville. The Peanut Festival going on in Floresville today. 90 at Stinson, 89 in Divine, 85 in Lost Maples, and 86 in Yavaldi. All right, so I mentioned before the break that there are indications that we're going to have a cold front this week. I say cold front with big old quotation marks next to it because we're really only going to cool down by about 5 to 10 degrees. At least that's what it looks like right now. You know, by about Monday, our high resolution forecast models will have a better view of when that front will be moving through. So we'll be able to adjust the temperature forecast then. But for now, this does look like a weaker front with only a chance for a few showers when it moves through on Thursday. Best we can do is about 20%. All right, Tropical Storm Julia is strengthening pretty rapidly. It will become a hurricane, potentially a Category 1 hurricane when it makes landfall sometime early tomorrow on the Nicaraguan coast. It is going to fall apart across Central America near El Salvador, and so this won't be a particularly strong hurricane, but a hurricane nonetheless. So we've got hurricane warnings on the Nicaraguan coastline. Otherwise, here we are hoping for some rain and it doesn't look good for rainfall for us. At least the weather will be pretty pleasant. Hey guys, mm. Barbacoa Big Red Festival. You said eating outside. I think we're going to have that forecast coming up in a bit. Thank All you, right, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now just about 9.51 breakfast of champions. Uh, about 75 degrees out there. Taking a look around San Antonio, this is 281 at Bassey. Traffic moving slowly. I mean, slowly, <laughs> smoothly. <laughs> Complete opposite. All right, still to come. New makeup products coming to Ulta. Max is going to get in line, and it involves <laughs> rock star Ozzy Osbourne. Good morning and welcome back. So heavy metal legend Ozzy Osbourne launching a new line of cosmetics just in time for Halloween. Do you want to do your impression real quick? Of, uh, yeah, Sharon. Well done, just like Ozzy's <laughs> in the newsroom. All right, the makeup line in collaboration with a rock and roll beauty. It comes complete with a coffin-shaped 
eyeshadow palette. Now, the products are reportedly available at Ulta and on Rock and Roll Beauty's website. The collection features dark shades and macabre packaging. Macabre, sorry, I'm learning. Uh, all in line with the singer's own style, which has often been described and featured dramatic dark eye makeup looks. So, do you think I can pull it off? Absolutely. Right. There's no question about it. I'm going to have to uh, talk to the higher ups. You, I'll I'm do the sure eyeshadow. That. You rock the purple hair. Absolutely. Any day. All right. Huge happy birthday to our very own Robert Samaron. Let's go. Hey, I think you took yes, that picture. Queen. <laughs> happy birthday, Robert. Happy birthday. So, for those who don't know, Robert is the man behind the camera in so many of our amazing live shots, making it all happen. And uh, they're just hanging out with the guys. Alicia Barrera taking that picture. So, there you go. <laughs> giving you our artistic. Robert's one of my favorites. He's oh, amazing. Yeah. He helps me out with my science with Sarah's. Every time we go out, he is just awesome. And he's always very nice in the morning. Always very nice. So happy birthday, Robert. Thank you for all that you do. Absolutely. Hope you have a fun time celebrating this weekend. Yeah. All right. Time right now, 955, 75 degrees. All right. So tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m., speaking with a breast radiation oncologist with UT Health San Antonio, where we talk about risk factors, proper detection methods, and how to lower that risk. If you have any questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for the full conversation. All righty, guys. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. After a two-year hiatus, mm -hmm. the Barbacoa and Big Red Festival is back on, baby. So I got us some Big Red to cheers with. Cheers. Cheers. And you guys at champions. home, too. And if you're planning on going out today or tomorrow, here is your Barbacoa and Big Red Festival forecast for today, 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. at RJ Music Pavilion. Gonna be warm when it kicks off, 88 degrees, but with the sunset, temperatures are gonna fall into the 70s. It's gonna be really nice. And tomorrow, pretty much the same forecast for us tomorrow. And on Monday, some folks have a three day weekend. And as we look ahead to the week, a cool front will Will bring us a small window for rain, only a 20% chance for showers and highs in the 80s. So again, cheers to San Antonio. Cheers, cheers to the, the resilience combo. of our community and a little bit of extra bubblegum flavored soda right now. Sugar and bubblegum. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 6 a.m.